Oh, all right, here we go. Another video. We're bringing you another video, right? Uh, tournament guidebook, um, one liners, axioms, and mantras written by Vishnu Warrior dropping this year, of course, right? Or actually sometime early next year. 200 biddies from T Dub. Thanks for that. Says God bless. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for that. So today we're looking at prophylaxis, right? Prophylaxis. Some people don't even know how to say it. Say it five times fast. Some people don't even know how to spell it or what it means, right? So prophylaxis, okay. Well, first things first, let's get into the definition. Edway says, What's up, man? What's good, my guy? We in a building. Now, here's a definition actually from Aaron Nimswich himself. So right here, pulling it out of the tournament guidebook book. So let me actually find that again. Let me find where my, my bookmark was. And let me find where we were again. Uh, the no. All right, cool. So this is from Aaron Nimswich himself, right? So he says, prophylaxis, right, spelled P-R-O-P-H-Y. L-A-X-I-S. Prophylaxis is what we call measures which have the aim of preventing certain developments which are undesirable for the positional viewpoint. You know, and actually, I'm not even gonna lie, bro. Hey, yo, thanks for the prime stir. Ed Wid, whoa, he just gifted and lifted. Appreciate the gift. And then we got three months from Georges. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So, uh, and we got a hype train. Appreciate that, y'all. Again, let me read that definition one more time. This is from Aaron Nimzowicz himself. Now, of course, he did have a lot of uh, very advanced ways to talk about stuff. Like this one right here. You'd be like, bro, wait, you got to read that like seven times to really understand it. And my system was like that. And that's probably why a lot of times my system doesn't get a lot of credit or people say it was very hard to read because it is. And there's a lot of stuff in there that was said very, very hard or very, very advanced that could have been said a lot simpler. But here, prophylaxis is what we call measures which have the aim of preventing certain developments which are undesirable from the positional viewpoint. Another way to think of prophylaxis is preventing something before it happens. Literally, preventing something before it happens, right? Stopping them doing something before they actually get to do it or are going to do it. That takes advanced stuff there and that actually takes, you know, that, that Zen Jedi moment where you're in there and you're in the lab and you start realizing what they actually going to do. So we're going to look at that today. Shout out to Go Go Gadget here. Keeping the hype train going. Gifting the sub to Flip 6-7. I appreciate that, bro. Let's go. Let's go. My buddy's got five kids. No prophylaxis in his house. Not at all. Absolutely not. Edwin. Big facts. Big facts. So, all right, here we go. This is the game. This is the game here. So we have uh, Carl Schlechter versus Aaron Nimzovich. And this is, um, what year is this? 1907. And this, the event was Carlsbad. That's the name of the event, Carlsbad. All right, here we go. So, and E4, right? So this is going to be fun. You know, like E4 all day, every day, right? And then we have E5, right? So some of the standard stuff, especially you E4, E5 players out there or E5 players for black. This is really going to actually help you here. You can catch this game out today. Knight of three, knight c6, bishop b5. We got a Roy. Everybody know a Roy. Everybody loves a good Roy, except, you know, when you don't want to play the Roy, which is me all the time. I don't play no more Roy, but it is a good classical opening to study, obviously. a6, bishop a4, we still follow in book. Nothing new here. Knight of six, knight to c3. And now, after this, you know, in fact, actually, we are following a little bit of new stuff. Knight, not that this is new. But knight c3 is not a move that you see often. It's not like the main move, right? I mean, it is a move, but it's not like the main, main move. Usually you see c3 or you'll see d3 or you see all these other stuff, right? So we know purple light at me. <laughs> right, yeah, it's kind of funny, Chess Ninja. They talked about that earlier in the chat. We was like, yo, yeah, that was kind of strange. But, okay, knight to c3, though. So knight to c3 is a move, right? It develops, but it's different from what you're used to with the C3 and the D3 stuff and bringing the bishop back to C2. So at the knight C3, now here is black. You know, where would you actually go for, especially for people here that play E5 anyway? As black to move, chat, we're going to start from right here. What would you actually do as black here? You have multiple moves, obviously, but what are you going to choose? We have bishop C5 from A doc. Let me actually turn the engine on as well. I just want to see what the engine says. I figured... Oh, they do consider it. Wow, after thinking. Bishop B4, just one nameless dude. We got uh, B5. Okay, so B5 action. Literally, guys, all of you are correct. And that's a good thing, right? I'm just showing you how the possibilities are in every position, right? You have Bishop C5 as a move. You have B5. You have D6. You have H H6 as well. But, and in fact, believe it or not, as strange as this move is, Bishop D6 is the engine's number one move, right? This is when you just turn the engine off. You're like, oh, that's your number one move? Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, you done for today, big dog. Yeah, yeah, go to sleep. Yeah, you done. 
Bishop d6 is like not a move. So, but this is the move that the engine's like, yeah, play bishop d6. Uh, but here, in fact, this is what Aaron Nimzowicz did right here. You've seen it recently? Yeah, it's just stupid. Like bishop d6, and, you, and then you lose the game, right? And after you lose, you like, you know, they ask you, why did you lose? Like, why did you play that? Because the engine said so. And they just like, well, now you're looking crazy. Well, engine tell you to jump off the building, huh? You're going to do it, aren't you? Yeah, I know you are. I know you are. It's all good. Bishop d6 is like wearing a sleeve shirt. It's just, ah, right. Engine wins on everything. That's right. That's correct. It's crazy. So, but here's the move. Nimzowitz did this. In fact, he went bishop to b4, which is different. I'm not a fan of this, to be honest, because I am not trying to give this bishop up. I am not a fan of actually giving up the two bishops voluntarily, unless it's something I'm already know. I know what the plan's going to be. Like, bishops are a little bit better, as we know. Even Bobby Fischer knew that too as well. We all know. Bishops, what did he, Bobby Fischer gave it 3.25 for a bishop, right? So bishops just being slightly better here, like, I'm not trying to give this up. So I'm not even, you know, pump thinking. Like, I'm not about to act like I'm going to take, I'm not taking this knight, right? So bishop before knight d5 happened, right? And then after knight d5, all right, guys, it's about to get a little strange, right? It's already like, uh-oh, you know, did you, is this what you wanted? Black to move. What do you do? Do you take the knight? Do you move the bishop? Do you play b5? Do you just castle and ignore it all? All right, castle says a dot. Well, until I beat the engine, I'm going to listen to it. <laughs> engine like, yeah, go ahead, chess ninja. Just jump off the building. Do it. Do it. Do it. It's going to be okay. All right, castle, d4. Computer troll and big facts. No, it's actually black to move. So d4 would not be it. I take so now you what a hundred elo player would do yeah you could take take d6 thanks for the follow mox jet d6 sorry that's what you meant yeah and bishop e7 from ed Wid. castle knight of six okay knight takes d5 so in fact knight takes d5 is the is the engine's move but it's hard to play this because the follow-up is very strange slightly high pie thanks for the follow right this is not your game right you don't seem like too nice spanish player come on spari it's on the screen spari it's on the screen, Spari. Sp Ridiculous. Somebody get your mans. Somebody get Spari right now. Take take 97. D4. Right. Um, yeah, right. Somebody get Spari. Somebody get him out of here. So look, Knight takes, Pawn takes. <laughs> there you go. Knight takes, Pawn takes. But believe it or not, the strangest move, bro, like this, this does not seem right. It looked like you're just kind of jumping right into something, but... In fact, you're not. This is very hard to do here. Knight takes e5, and then his castle. This position is absolutely nuts right now. c3 is here, but then his king's in the center of the board. There's a lot going on. So that's the route he could have went. But in fact, all he did was just go bishop e7. That's probably it's a verbal whooping. <laughs> bishop e7. So he went back. All right. White castle, black castle, uh, equal game. Ricky won, and d6 from black. So he went some strange way of playing. Like, if you think about how you regularly would play the Roy... You got the same position, but he just went bishop e4 and then bishop e7. I guess provoking, like, but I probably wouldn't try this at home, to say the least. I would probably just play what I know or play what the book says or play what you study. But maybe this bishop b4 action and then backing up is just slightly strange. I mean, plus this knight is kind of annoying here and you have to learn what to do. Okay, nevertheless, after d6, knight takes f6, bishop takes f6, and c3, right? So, okay. Cool. and black plays h6 here sort of a waiting move trying to figure out what white's gonna do right now let's make some moves here guys this is literally nothing but a maneuvering game until we get to the prophylaxis part which is a point there's a few moments in here that straight prophylaxis right preventing something before it happens so after 97 there's d4 knight g6 rerouting this is a, a common way to reroute i mean literally this is still like opening like to be honest i mean yeah they're castled and i guess we can kind of call it middle game here but at the same time like this is we still like what what have we developed right both sides what have we developed really i mean the bishop and knight which is kind of strange a lot of play left and after bishop e3 okay now chat let's do this black to move what you gonna do here you got a lot of possibilities here and i like what aaron nims which shows shows here it was actually a very interesting idea, in fact. Very interesting idea. Black to move. You got a lot of ideas, obviously, here. What are you going to do? Now, I will give you the engine moves as well. So, if you get those right, good job. If you do find the ones from the engine. But, um, 
I'm gonna tell you what Nimzowitz did in a minute. Silent Bishop takes h3, knight g4, d5, king h8. Silent king h8. Silent bishop takes h3. Knight g4 is not a move. In fact, big fella, I know what you mean. No, you meant knight f4. Knight f4, king h8. Okay, that's prophylactic right there. I like it. King h8, but prophylactic. Stepping off of anything that might hit the file over here or the diagonal. This is the, the title of today's video, Preventing Things Before It Happens, Prophylaxis. Bishop d7 to encourage a trait between the undeveloped piece and a pretty powerful bishop. Bishop to e6 from Edwin. I mean, bishop e6 is a move at the right moment, too, as well. Maybe provoking d5 as well. Maybe lock it up. Have more of a king's Indian type um, structure type thing. b4, you mean b5, which is 100% a move as well. In fact, here it is. The engine move, number one, is b5. And then put the bishop on b7. Logical move to make. The next one is bishop d7. And the third, Edwin, is bishop e6. All from the engine. Those are the top three moves. Here's what Nemzowitz did. He played this right here. King h7. Whoa. What is he doing? What is he doing? What sense does this make? Well, actually, it's kind of the same as king h8. It's just a prophylactic move. I'm stepping off because I'm probably going to eventually move this f pawn at the right moment. I might actually need to push this f pawn for something. I'm also stepping off the line. It's also an advanced waiting move. But king h7 it really doesn't change much about the position. Putting it back on white, like, okay, your move. What are you going to do? After king h7, white says queen to d2. Cool, we just about to chill here. h7 versus h8. Well, if you see now, you know, bishop takes h6 is not even something you want to even handle. But, I mean, I think he could have went king h8. But actually, as you see later on, watch, watch, it. that's one thing, a doc. But as you see later on, watch how h7 and h8 are crucial squares, meaning he went to h7 because he probably had this in mind moves before, meaning right now already. Very, very advanced. I mean, this was a very, very good game from Aaron Nimzo here. Like, the man did some stuff that was like, bro, that is cold. That is legendary. Right, Young Gun, thanks for the follow. Trez, thanks for the follow. So Bishop E6 now, right, provoking D5, like we said. So if D5 happens, we just happily back up to either D7 or C8. It really doesn't matter. I probably would go C8. The reason being is because I want to keep this Bishop for this attack, and then I'm going to move this Bishop and this Knight, play F5 and G5, get real live, right? This is what you do in these King's Indian type setups, and the pawn structure points to what side you should play on. So I should be playing on this side of the board. So with that being said though, um, bishop e6 though, after bishop e6 there was bishop c2. And now this kind of highlights the point, you know, king h8 might have been slightly a move that you wanted, but you know, uh, what does Bobby Fisher say? Bobby Fisher says to, to get squares, you have to give squares. So if I want to have the h8 square for anything, I do have to put my king here, which allows this. So like it's pros and cons to both, in fact. What up, big homie? What's good? Checkmate the great. What's good, bro? Okay, here we go. Now, after bishop to c2, there's queen e7. Getting the queen off the back rank. And now here it is. Bam, d5. It's on the board. We kind of just talked about this already, about what we're going to do. You just go move the bishop. And he moves it back to d7. And now here it is. King h2, right? So he's doing the same thing as us, kind of in a way. I'm sure you've seen this before in your own games, right? When your opponent just kind of uh, copies you or does the same kind of moves you make in a way prepping to play. A lot of times when you see this, you guys are prepping to play f4 and f5, right? Just moving the king off the diagonal that you can be checked on. And now here it is. Here it is, guys. This is the first part of prophylactic, basically prophylaxis 101, okay? This is a legendary game right here and also a legendary move from Aaron Nimzowicz himself. It's black to move, chat. What do you do here? This is prophylaxis number one. Prophylaxis number one. He has a few moves in here that was prophylax genius. Prophylactic genius here. But what do you do? We have knight h4 from Danny. Hello, I'm new here. What's up, mister? What's good, bro? I played a Roy. I've never seen this. Right. I know. This is something you can add to your arsenal. Knight f4. We have knight h4 and knight f4. Okay, this is legendary. King h8, you basically told us. This Jackson. Okay. Rook A to C8. <clears throat> Queen E6. Oh, wow. Jeez, D-Shock. Don't even do that to yourself. My goodness, D-Shock. Don't even do that. Knight H8, I meant, says Jackson Ham Chess. H5 from Contraband. Here it is. B5, right. Right. In fact, right, you said he basically just told us, but nobody got it, right? Jackson Ham 
So how did we actually tell them when nobody got it? Which means nobody was either listening or you got it and everyone else did it. It is Night H8. What? Night H8 and we great. What in the world, bro? I When I first saw this, I remember seeing this before I actually looked at this game. I remember seeing this move in a certain book that I'm reading right now, in fact. And I, I sent a prophylaxis chapter, in fact. And they show this game. And I was like, oh my goodness. Night H8. And I probably, like, anytime I remember, you know, what, what, um, you can go see this on YouTube right now in my Chicago Open 2019 playlist. And it's round number like five or six. Don't remember, but one of them is, uh, one of them was playing against the perk defense or Pierce or whatever, or whatever you want to call it. And I remember I was playing white and as white here, I, I was able to play knight h1. And when I played knight h1, right, I put it on the board and I like twisted it in there. Like just kind of like twice, like you're screwing it in. Because when do you ever in an over the board game be able to play a move like knight to h1 or knight h8, right, with a maneuver. And I, know I won the game, but it was pretty cool to be able to put my knight on h1. So I imagine Nimzo here, when he put that knight on h8, he just like, mm, knight h8, big fella, mm, knight h8, right? And now what's the idea? What's the idea? Prophylaxis. Well, it's a preventative measure, measure that is directed towards White's plan. White's plan here, and this is, bro, Nimzo was nasty. Now, of course, his My System book was very, very hard to read, and it still is, because, I mean, bro, he just used super big words to say stuff that's very simple. Like, prophylaxis here, right? He said, hold on, let me read you to his definition, right? Now, our definition is very easy, preventing things before it happens. Prophylaxis, cool, check mark, class over, right? You done, easy. Prevent things before it happens. Here's what his says. Prophylaxis is what we call measures, which have the aim of preventing certain developments which are undesirable from the positional viewpoint. Bro, what? I mean, now, of course, you do understand it. But, yo, he said a lot there. He said a whole lot of that, right? He said a whole lot of that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, but what he did here, he was very, very strong in this aspect. When he played knight h8, you know, the plan for white is to play knight g1 and play f4 and g3. That's White's plan. He knew this, so he played knight h8, so he could play g5. Wow. And then, knights work best behind pawns, not in front of them. So, he's going to play g5 and then put knight g6, so now I'm stopping your only push. Your whole plan is now gone. Crazy. Knight h8. Prophylactic 101, big fella. When you're trying to hit a paper over kind of you know <laughs> I'm funny, I'm funny. So, all right, knight h8. After knight h8, knight g1, he goes forward anyway. He was like, you know, when knight h8 happened, Carl was probably like, oh my goodness. This man, like he probably was thinking to himself, like, you know, you know how you feel when you know that somebody know that they got you? And you know that they know that you know that they got you, right? You understand? You following me here? Yeah, Carl is definitely feeling like that. He like, oh snap, this man just played knight h8. Bro, what? Yeah, he know exactly what he's doing. After knight h8, knight g1, he plays g5, and he like, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. This is going to be on Twitch in 100 years for sure. That's exactly what he probably said. He was like, damn, bro, they, they about to have me on a poster out here. They about to have me on a poster. Mm-mm-mm. G5, and we live. So at this point, at this point, story of my life, right? At this point, he has to go for it. Carl was like, well... Shoot, I mean, what else do I do? So he goes G3 so he can go F4. Knight G6, stopping F4, because there's a lot going on. If you try to go F4 anyway, well, that's just 100% premium face blockage. Get the man off the board. That's not a move. GG. Start a new one. Takes, takes. Sheesh, give me everything. This is a family channel. Get that off the board. So that doesn't work. So after Knight G6, he goes Queen D1. Gives up on the idea of F4 because it's not there anymore. Now, black to move. All right, guys. We stopped at four. Okay, let's keep it moving. Black to move. What do we do next? I'm curious how he's gonna free his bishop. Great question, A Doc. Great question. Bishop G7 from Big Spari. Bishop H8 from Play With. Okay. Family channel. Big big facts since hot. Two times. Bishop G7 from King Side. 
That's right. His highest rating was 2780. I forgot about that. She's think about that, right? 2780? That's not right now. That's nasty. Like, jeez. 2780? My goodness. I went to with the move that makes no sense. Yeah, I mean, Bishop H8 does kind of make no sense, but it also moves the bishop out of the way. In fact, you guys are correct. Let's not, you know, just wait too long on that. You're correct. Bishop G7. Move the bishop out of the way. Maybe F5 can be a potential move for us and maybe even tuck the king on H8. Because if we play F5, like, automatically we're sitting in this disgusting X-ray. So after F5, snap, snap, rook takes, double on the file with a smile, right? We're not feeling too good. So, you know, okay, well, we need to be careful. Queen F3, stopping the F5 push. And now, right... Next move, guys. Next move. This is part two of prophylaxis. Part two right here. You got to really understand what's going on around the entire board for you to actually play a move like this and get away with it. It is black to move. What do you do? This is all KID stuff. Big facts. Thanks for the follow. Legaliana or Leg Aliana. Legaliana. One of them three. Thanks for the follow. <laughs> when you have an open name after you, you got to be GM right. Big facts. Right, black to move. Knight back just to stun on him. Straight up. Rick H8 is some KID stuff. I like Rick H8. Silent B5. Knight to F4. Was Aaron Nimza with the GM? Well, he was 2780, is what they say here in the chat. Um, so, you know, if he wasn't GM, um, you know, something was wrong with the system. C6, Queen D8, F5, C5, or A5 from Holy Ankrasat. B5 or H4. And here it is, Big Nim, Big Nim's all right. <laughs> That's funny. Yo, imagine him calling in. Hey, yo, Big Nim, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> so, yeah, bro, that's hilarious. Big Nim never even looked at it like that. So, all right, here we go. Black to move. Here's what he did. Here's what he did. Big Nim chose A5. Nuts. Absolutely nuts here. A5, bro. That's crazy. A5. What he's doing is just prophylactic squeezing just very prophylactic right a5 and we live that's right a doc that's right okay right and, and also like he's just stopping the b4 push which is going to happen eventually so he's playing on both sides of the board big M, call me big luke yo big luke what up what up a5 killing counterplay correct i'm the only big <laughs> big luke mad bro hey somebody get your hands big luke don't do it to him this is a family channel big fella could Nimzo see in the future? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he definitely did. Because A5 prevents B4, stopping more counterplay for white, right? Stopping more of it. So, okay, he goes 92 because this knight is absolutely gross here. All right, chat, next move is on you. Very positional squeeze here from black, but also fairly an equal game according to the engine. It's black to move. Where do we go now? Where do we go now? Maybe big, but not large, huge. <laughs> Y'all are ridiculous. We got Big Nim, Big Luke, and then we got Mac Large Huge all going at it in the chat. Just just big. It's a big a big fight in the chat. Like big, literally, pun intended. B5, B5. B5, I like a B5. I do like some B5 action. Does Black want to see file open if White plays B4? B5 or Bishop B5 because you have played A5. All right, Rick A6, B5, B Hive. All right, so look, B5 is a move that's actually number two on the engine. A4 is number three. Number one is Queen F6, which I'm not ever doing. Like, why would I want to trade queens right now? That's a big, big no. You know, this is where you like, huh? No engine, no. Like, literally, you should say that to the engine sometimes. Here, now, B5 I like, but actually, Aaron Nimzo, which toes this one. Bishop B5, which is a still good, I guess. I like the B5 more, more, because it's just gaining space. But bishop to b5 is what he chose here. Bishop to b5. I mean, you know, really, I guess he could have played anything else, but he just chose to maybe capture this. Like, this one is kind of strange. It really is. Like, he went bishop b5. I mean, it's a nice diagonal to be on. So a4, and then he backed it up to d7, right? <laughs> right? Oh, man. But what he did here is, I guess, it was a provoking move. Sometimes what you call this is creating a weakness or actually... You can do something to slow down their play. So think about this. The play, it looks like it might have expedited the play, but in fact, it's still slowing it down a little bit. I can lock down the queen side. The play that white thought he had is kind of paralyzed, right? Look at the knight. Even look at the knight, right? It's gross. You know, c4 locks up stuff more, weakens the b4 square. It's just not a lot of play for white on the queen side of the board. So this was prophylactic once again. 
Bishop b5, playing back to d7 now, locking up the play for, for white. Pretty paralyzed position, crazy. So then rook h1, bam. Right, so now he wants to break kind of with like h4, maybe moving a king somewhere, probably playing h4, something like that. He want to take the rooks off the board. Uh, maybe, maybe in fact, but he is trying to push for more. But this is an equal position right out. Now it's black to move, folks. What do we do right now? What do we do? I see queen e1 can paralyze the rook and the bishop. Oh, queen e8. Uh, queen e8, is that right now, holy uncrasant? Do you mean queen e8 right now? c6 from just one nameless dude says c6. We have queen e8 and we have c6. It's black to move, y'all. King g8 from young gun. I like c6, rook h8, symmetrical. Okay, rook h8. I like rook h8 too, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm a big fan of rook h8 followed by king g8 and rook f8. So I have the rooks on literally both the action files, right? Like imagine, you know, rook here, bring the king back, rook f8, like all the action is right here. So I got the rooks on the files. Those look cool. But how about that silent rook a7? Ha! <laughs> That's real silent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you need to be silent all the way back to your room or your hotel room. Right, don't talk to nobody. You don't even need, you don't even deserve it. Like, just don't talk to nobody. You silent for real. You should just be silent. Hey, from Devin Brooks Stream, how y'all doing? What's up, Underground Queen? Yo, did he raid us? I didn't see no raid come to him. Let me get the note. Queen E8. Yo, what's up, Underground Queen? What's good, girl? Rook A6. Yeah, yeah. Face block, 100% premium, my guy. G4, suicide. Yeah, don't do it to yourself, big fella. Don't even do it. All right, here's the move. Fact, in fact, here it is, guys. You got it. It's queen e8. What a move here. Wow, wow. What's the threat? Somebody tell me what the threat is. What is queen e8 about? What is queen e8 about? He did? I didn't see the raid, bro. That's crazy. Yo, let me scroll up. I did not see no raid come through. Something might have went wrong on that end. I don't see no raid, bro. That is crazy. Wow, we always get the raid. Like it always comes through. That's crazy. Ninety-seven at f five for okay. Queen e seven frees up the knight. But why would we go queen e eight though? Oh, you mean uh, queen e queen e eight frees up the knight. Ninety-seven. Okay. Thanks for the follow, Toka. Planning b five. That could be a plan. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Hey, I'm from Devis Brooker Stream. What's up, Tara Baker? Yo, hey, Devin Booker, thanks for, uh, for, um, thanks for, uh, raiding, bro. Uh-oh, that's how I got here. I was there first. Yeah, that's crazy. Hey, thanks for the raid from Devin Booker. Somehow, I guess it came through and it didn't come through at the same time. But thanks for the raid, bro. Yes, that's right. Sentai got it. In fact, Queen C8 is the idea. Queen C8 is the whole idea here. With Queen to C8, we're trying to play. So now, right, we can meet H4 with G4, right? And we have all kind of action. All right, it's just pretty cool to do that. Curve, thanks for the follow. Hey, how y'all doing? Tara Baker, what's good? What's up, girl? Queen e8, and after bishop, oh, uh, he played h3, or h4, sorry. After h4, all right, fat folks, what do we do, Chad? Are we doing queen c8, or are we doing something else? Are we gonna do queen c8 here anyway? Do we take on h4? This is getting crazy. Bishop h, bishop h8, and we great, my guy, he says. G4 for the score from a dot. What else we got? Anything else? G4? Y'all trying to G4 it? Queen C8? G4 and punch report. Yo, just, he always, he always gets that off. Every, every analysis. G4, okay? Here it is. He just played the simple Queen C8. He did it anyway. He said, go ahead, I dare you to take it. I dare you, right? Well, let's see what happens if he does, because he did not take this. But after takes, there's bishop to G2, like, hey, bro, what do you do? So you got to hide back here one time. Queen here, and then I'm snapping. Now, weirdly enough, this is actually equal. Bars, he says. Right. G4, please hold the door. Stop. Just stop right now. F5 for real, though. Yeah. But bishop takes E2, and after F3, bishop A6 and F4, and white has some serious compensation. But this is actually equal according to the engine. I can't see what's good. Yo, so this is, this is, um... This is equal according to the engine. Like, that's, it's pretty nuts. It's literally pretty nuts. So, we go back here, though. After queen c8, he didn't snap at all. He played bishop to d3, allowing just bishop g4 anyway. And then after queen to g2, okay, folks, what do we do, chat? What do we do? Black to move? How do we finish this off? Is the game over? What's going on? What's your eval? You're wasting of this position. 
I would hate to be black in that line taking a night. It could be scary. Engines are even a piece down, still nasty. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's how it is. Engine sees everything. Engine sees everything. Hey, Kenton, do you still wear glasses over the port? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I wear glasses in the shower, you know, sleep, and, you know, it's, just, it's fab. It's fab. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. G takes H4. Knight takes H4. Bishop of 6, F5 when we live. Bishop H3 when we get something for free. Look at y'all, man. Y'all are y'all starting to catch on to the lingo on Timester. I sees it. I sees it in the shower. Right. <laughs> G4, okay. G. Let me see. Knight takes H4. We got G takes H4. Takes the F5. We have H4, F5 when we live. All right, here it is right here. This is what Nimzo did. The man himself took on H4, actually, with the pawn, which is the best move. Just take on H4 with the pawn. F3 happened. All right, after F3, do we move the bishop? Do we take on G3? Is there something else that you want to do? But this is getting very, very wild right now. It's black to move. Anti got me saying some lingo IRL. No, for real. I actually get that all the time. It would be really be like, yo, bro, Canty. I'd be telling people at work that's not a move. And I'd be like, wow, that is insane. That's what's up. That's 1,000%. What's up? Always capture with check. Okay, we got H3. It's getting real. It's getting very real. Take on G3. It's free, says Hero. Retreat Bishop, H3, and he just put dots. Yeah, probably it's going to be something ridiculous. So it's a good thing. A takes G3. H takes G3. H, G, and we free. Take G with 10. Okay? I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Here it is, though. Here it is. In fact, H takes G3 is a move. <laughs> Boss, you're fired. Me, that's not a move, sir. <laughs> That's funny. H3. He actually played H3. H3 was better. H3 was better. It kind of closes up the file a little bit. I can also play H4 twice now. Pretty good. Cool, cool. Right. Vishnu said H3. Right. And after Queen F1. Right. Now, okay. Bishop take Bishop D7. Um. Yeah. Bishop D7 should be the next move. I think here. But he plays something else instead of Bishop D7. And Bishop D7 is like the most natural. What's up, Devin Booker in the house? Hey, what's up, my guy? Thanks for the raid, bro. Bishop d7 is the most natural, but is there anything else that you can play here, guys? Are we playing Bishop d7 or are we doing anything else? F5 and we live, says Turkey Gamers. Spari says F5. Let's go. Pass pawn alert, says Jim. All right, I'm going to give you a few more seconds to get this one down. H3 out, says so right, bro. Devin Booker. That's good. Is Bishop h5 bad? Uh, yeah, Bishop H5 is gross. I mean, we just played G4 for the score. You know, GG, start a new one, big fella. Start a new one. What you doing with your life? What you doing with your life? Right, so it just don't make a move. You just, it just don't work. So, in fact, here it is, boy. Sheesh, F5 and we live. That's a big boy move from the big fella. F5, oh my goodness, right? So, of course, after takes, right, do you take here? So, wait, wait. All right, he did take it, but how do we capture, guys? What do we do? F5, this is on the board. This is wild. It became very prophylactic, right? The game got all crazy and prophylactic this. Make sure he don't prevent him from doing this, blah, blah, blah. And then it got all crazy. How do we do this? Do we take on G4 or E4? And unanimous, it looks like E4 is the answer. 1,000%. One thou, wow. F takes E4 for the score, hitting the bishop and the queen at the same time. Queen takes e H3 and then E takes D3. And now, okay, bishop takes h6, and you're like, oh, snap. All right, let me put my hands up real quick, right? Let me put my hands up. Whoa. But then they forget that you're a Jedi, right? And you reach across the room while your hand's up and hit that man with the saber on the way when they get to your hand, right? You know what I'm saying here, right? This is black to move. It's black to move. You think this is over, but it's not. It is not. It is white to move. You think this is over. But it ain't. It's just getting started, big fella. It's just getting started. Here it is. Y'all got it. It says Rook F2 and we live. That was terrible, Phantom Master Glendry. That was absolutely terrible. Like, 2 and live do not rhyme at all. Try again. Rook F2. Right, Rook F2. Rook H8. King G8. King G8. Rook F2. Okay. Rook F2 and we great. You and... What are y'all doing? Bridgeport, Mitch, and Phantom Master Glendry. Rook F2 and we great. Smiling, cheesing real hard. Real hard. All the way wrong. Rook F2 and we boot. That, okay, that was that rhyme, but that was gross. 
Rig F2. <laughs> just stop it right now. Just everybody stop. Everybody just stop. Just stop right now. Rick H8 for Vishnu. Okay. Rick F9. And we find stop it. Rick H8. Okay. D, D takes E2. All right. That's a move as well. Right. Bishop takes H6. Here it is right here, guys. Very simple. Very simple. Very cool move. And right here, this sealed the deal. I don't know what happened after this because there's nothing else recorded in the history of chess, right? There is nothing else recorded after this move. Rook H8, and we great. The game's over, in fact. Right now, the engine says minus five, minus a five piece. But let's see why, right? If bishop takes G7 or bishop moves anywhere, well, first off, look at that. Boom. That's a real deal pin for the win. Sheesh. My goodness, right? Ain't nothing you can do about that. So if you don't, well, okay, bishop takes H6 is still going to be a big thing. And literally the best move here, in fact, here's the best moves. King G1, King G2, King G1, G2, and Knight G1. So knight g1 ain't no, well actually this is hanging, I forgot about that. So actually that does make sense. But let's say we move the king out the way, then it says king g8. King g8 and after g5, we trade, rook takes, and then we take on e2. And now we just up a full piece for nothing. Literally we up a full piece. Up a full piece here. Black's just completely winning. Completely winning here, right? That's absolutely beautiful, right? All these prophylactic moves made, then played f5 and we live. And it was a rapster. I mean, that was crazy. This right here was legendary, right here with the knight h8 move. Right here. Uh, these are positions that you get almost every day. Why was f2 busted? Let's go check. But here, queen e7, these are positions you get like every day here. Now you know that you can play knight h8 and like stare at the computer real hard, right? Hoping that your opponent feels that pressure, right? Or you can do it in real life. If you play an OTB, knight g6, bishop g7. That was gross. He played knight h8 here, bro. Knight h8 to play g5 to stop the f4, which is usually a thing that happens, especially with rook f1, g3 stuff. g5, knights work best behind pawns, not in front of them. So he put the knight right here on g6 behind the pawn, controlling f4 for the score. Great game. Excellent. Knight h8 is a non sphere move, right? I mean, I actually don't know that, Greg Lars, but maybe. Yeah, you might be right. I think you know more than I do there. Bishop g7, queen f3, a5, another prophylactic. Click that mouse, click the mouse real hard when you play knight h8, real hard, like just like, like bow, you know, bow, just, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> knight h8, real hard, real hard flex, that was great though, that was prophylaxis guys, hopefully you can learn something from that today, in prophylaxis, and you can use it in your own games, this was today's video, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I'll see y'all on the next video.